and freezing some $300 million in military aid as it accuses that country of just not doing enough to battle terrorist groups on its own soil. We're joined now by Mal Gardner, who's the director of the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom. Now, let's start simple on this. Right move, freezing the $300 million in military aid? Absolutely the right move. I think this sends the right message to, uh, to Pakistan. And for many, many years, decades even, uh, Pakistan has been playing a, a very dangerous sort of double game here uh, with regard to uh, the war on, on terror. On the one hand, it has provided some assistance to the United States uh, with the war in Afghanistan, allowing the supply supplies to move forward to uh, NATO forces in Afghanistan. On the other hand, Pakistan has continued to provide a safe haven uh, to a number of Islamist terrorist organizations operating in the north of the country in the federally administered, administered uh, tribal uh, regions. Uh, and in particular, uh, an organization known as the Haqqani Network, um, which is tied to the Taliban, has been uh, given aid and support by elements of the Pakistani uh, government, in particular the security services. And so Washington is saying enough is enough. Right. Uh, Pakistan has to decide whose side it's on in this war against Islamist terrorism. There's been a push-pull here. I mean, when you think about it, we're getting close to two decades in the post-9-11 era with Pakistan in terms of, to your point, needing and sometimes getting their help and other times just not getting the cooperation that we need. So is the financial motivation, I'm sure in the past it's been tried as well, but is the financial motivation the one that will speak to Pakistan? They... I think it's, it's an important uh, aspect, I think, for U.S.-Pakistan uh, relations. Um, incredibly, uh, the United States has given about $33 billion uh, worth of aid to Pakistan since uh, the 9-11 attacks, and that money is now uh, ending. Uh, and this, of course, is an issue for uh, Pakistan. This is a country that's heavily in debt. It's actually heavily indebted in many ways to, uh, to China, which has invested heavily in Pakistan in the last uh, few years to the tune of about $62 billion. Uh, um, and so the United States is sending a very clear signal to Pakistan that any further assistance uh, from the United States to Pakistan depends upon uh, Pakistan siding with the United States right. uh, in the war in Afghanistan and against Islamist uh, terrorist organizations. Now, what would the consequence for us, for the United States, be if there was just a complete economic collapse in, in Pakistan? I know Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, I believe is going back there again uh, this week, but he'd been quoted earlier in the summer, back in, in July, as saying the IMF should not bail out Pakistan again, the International Monetary Fund, which has bailed them out a number of times in the past. So should we just let them go and, you know, let them fail, see what happens, or does the U.S. have an interest because of the geography you're here in kind of keeping Pakistan afloat? Well, I think uh, the United States has a keen interest in ensuring that uh, Pakistan remains a, a long-term I think be party to endless bailouts of Pakistan through the uh, through the IMF, and if indeed the IMF was to loan money to uh, to Pakistan, Pakistan would use that money to repay debts to to China. Mm -hmm. That's not in uh, the U.S. national interest, and so the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has been absolutely right to oppose uh, a further IMF bailout of uh, of Pakistan, uh, and. Uh, also, I think that Mike Pompeo will be emphasizing to the new uh, Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan uh, this week that Pakistan needs to really launch um, a, a new approach towards its, its dealings with the United States, a far more positive agenda for U.S.-Pakistan relations, one that rejects Islamist extremism, one that also is far more cooperative in terms of the U.S.-led military efforts in Afghanistan. And also, Washington would like to see a Pakistan that is less adversarial towards India. And, and sure. Pakistan, of course, has been very difficult on this front. For many years.